Throughout this whole year, you've been asking for a Blender beginner sculpting course. Today, I am delivering exactly that. Let's talk about the brushes and their hotkey. There you go, that's uh, that's looking really nice. If you guys enjoyed the tutorial, then you will definitely enjoy the full course with the exclusive contents. Also, spread the word, share this video with your friends. Let's make this community so big. I'll see you guys in the next one. Wait, hold up. Let's rewind. Hey, how you doing? Today I'm coming with an early Christmas present for you guys. Throughout this whole year, you've been asking for a Blender beginner sculpting course. And today I am delivering exactly that. I've been working super hard on this for the past month or so, and I'm really excited to show you what I got for you guys. There will be two main tutorials. The first one we're gonna watch today. So first I'm gonna show you how to download Blender. Yes, from the beginning. And then I'm gonna show you how to work with the preferences and how to set up the preferences for sculpting. I'm also gonna show you how to navigate in Blender, how to navigate with a tablet. I'll show you how to set up the viewport for sculpting which is also important. And then I'm gonna go to the brushes. So I'm gonna talk about the sculpting brushes. I'm gonna talk about their hotkeys. I'm gonna talk about which ones are important and which ones I use. I'll also talk about the mask brush, all the hotkeys of the mask brush and how important it is to use it. Next, I'll talk about the settings of the brushes. So I'll show you how to set up your brushes so that you can start sculpting right away in Blender. Just after that, I'm gonna talk about dynamic topology, which is an awesome feature in Blender and it makes sculpting so fun and so good. Initially, I was supposed to stop right there, I'm like, what the heck, you know what? I'm gonna show you how to use these brushes in real time. So I decided to make a demo of sculpting the ear to show you all of the brushes that I use and in which situations to use them. Finally, since a lot of you have been wondering how to do the following, I'm gonna show you how to merge objects in Blender. Pretty cool, right? Well, hold your horses because it's not done yet. As I said, I worked so hard on this, so I got more content for you guys. There will be an additional one hour of tutorials, including tips, tricks, warnings, advice, and a lot of other things about sculpting which will be exclusive for my Patreons and if you get it through Gumroad. Second part of this tutorial will be out a week after I release this video. So it'll be about sculpting a stylized male at character and it's gonna be so awesome because I'm going to do it in real time with commentary. That's right. I think it's going to be around two hours of video. So you're gonna listen to me talk a lot, which could be annoying. But anyways, the point here is you're gonna get a lot out of this course. So you'll notice that even though I worked very hard on this, I'm making most of the content available for everyone. And that's because I want to make sure that anybody who wants to learn sculpting and get to this channel is able to do so. That said, there will be exclusive content for this course if you want to get it through Gumroad, Patreon, support this channel, or just learn more sculpting, you'll be able to do so. Make sure you watch till the end of the video. I'll talk about what you get. I'll even give you a promotional code for anyone who needs it, cutting the price in half, but it's gonna be for a limited time. So don't miss out and let's start. If if you've never used Blender before, you can go to blender.org and download the latest version. Now I'm gonna be using 2.79 for this tutorial, but don't worry about the version you got, you'll still be able to follow the tutorial, most probably, if they ever release a version that is way more advanced than the tutorial I'm creating today, I'll be creating another video, but for now, don't worry about it. When you first install Blender, you're gonna get something like this, well, not quite. Let me just load the factory settings and there you go. That's what you're gonna get. So first thing I wanna talk about navigating in Blender, especially for sculpting and some settings I want you to change. We're gonna go to file, user preferences or control alt U. Let me just pull this down. And then we're gonna go to input right over here. Now I want you to activate emulate three button mouse and this is quite important, especially if you're using a tablet. By default, to navigate in Blender, you can use the middle mouse button to rotate, the middle mouse button and shift key button to pan, and finally you can use the middle mouse button and control key button to zoom in and out. Now that's one way to navigate in Blender. The issue here is that when you use a tablet, the pen pressure is basically like the left mouse button which is an issue because as i explained we need the middle mouse button to rotate and do other things so once we go to user preference which i kind of lost over here there you go and we emulate the three button mouse it basically turns the alt and left mouse button to the middle mouse button so let me demonstrate if i use the alt and I apply pressure with my tablet, so with my pen, it's gonna act as a middle mouse button and rotate. 
if I do that with the control button, so control alt and the pen, it's going to zoom in and out. And finally control alt, well, actually alt shift and the pen and it will pen. So the same thing as the mouse, you're just going to add the alt button. There you go. Now we're going to make sure that the viewport is ready for sculpting. I personally prefer to start my sculpts with sphere. So I'm going to delete the default cube with the X button. Use the shift A button to create a new UV sphere. Perfect. Next, I want you to hit the N button and go to the view section. By default, the lens is set to 35, which means that when you're sculpting and get really close to your sculpt, especially if you have a complex sculpt like a character, it's gonna be a bit too distorted, at least for my taste. So what I like to do is change the lens to either 80 or 100. Really up to you. Okay, now we're gonna go down and activate the matte cap in the shading section and choose this one over here. You could go with any other matte cap, but this one better represents the shapes in Blender. And finally, I'd like you to activate the ambient occlusion. If you don't know what that is, you know, best to Google it, but let me just demonstrate. When you duplicate this right here, take a look at this section. If I remove the ambient occlusion, these shadows over here are gone, which I wouldn't really call shadows, it's called ambient occlusion. And this helps with the shapes when you're sculpting. Okay, so the thing is, I don't want to have to repeat that every time I want to sculpt. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to file and we are going to save the startup file. So next time we, whoops, let me just do that again. Save startup file. Okay. So next time we start a new blender scene, we're going to get the same exact thing. Let's talk about the brushes and their hotkeys. First thing we're going to do is grab the object, go from object mode to sculpt mode down here, and then finally click on the icon. You're going to see all the brushes available to blender by default. You can create your own or download from the internet, but for this video, we're going to use what we got. Okay. So the most useful brushes that I personally use are the clay strips, Crease, Grab Brush, Inflate, well Inflate I don't really use but it can be used for a lot of people, the Mask Brush, the Pinch, the Scrape Brush, and finally the Sculpt Draw Brush. I personally prefer using hotkeys to access them because you know it takes a lot of time to switch between brushes if you sculpt a lot. So what you want to do is write these down and always remember to use them and at a point it becomes second nature. So let's see. For the clay strip, it is number three. For the crease, it is number four. For the grab brush, it is G, so G for grab. For the inflate, it is I, I for inflate. Next, we have the mask, so M for mask. We're gonna go more into details on this later on. And then we got the pinch, so P for pinch. Next, we got the scrape brush, a bit more complicated, so it is shift four. And finally, for the sculpt draw brush over here, it is shift five. Now you're gonna notice by default, the sculpt draw brush, for example, it is on add, which means that if I apply pressure over here, it's going to push the mesh out. Now you could either select subtract and do the opposite, or you can use the control button for any other brush as well, to do the opposite really quick, and that is quite useful. I didn't really talk about the smooth brush yet, so I don't. I never really access the smooth brush like this and then smooth things out. You can do so by hitting the shift button with any brush you got. So even if I got the grab brush over here, I'm gonna push things out, and I wanna smooth things out, you could use the shift button and smooth things out. Perfect. Next, we have the F button, so to basically change the size of the brush. You can do so with the F button and you can use the shift F button to change the strength of the brush. This I personally do not use. Finally, for the hotkey that I wanted to mention, but we're going to talk more about this later on, is the dynamic topology. You can basically activate this with control D. Now I'd like to talk about the mask. So if you go to sculpt mode and you hit the M button, you can access the brush. When you apply pressure over here, you're gonna get this dark color. And what this means is that if you go to another brush, for example, like the grab brush, and you try to manipulate that part, you can't. So it's basically masked out. And that can be really useful in many situations. Now the mask brush has a lot of hotkeys and they're all useful, so try to take some notes. Okay, so first things first, Control-I inverts the mask, as you can see. 
If you have the mask brush on, you can smooth out the mask by using the shift button. So it won't really smooth the sculpt, it'll only smooth out the mask. You can use the alt M button to remove the mask. If you go down here, you're gonna get other options. For example, the lasso mask, which is shift, control, left mouse, or the pen. So again, shift, control, and the pen. You can create masks this way. I'm gonna remove this symmetry for a minute just to demonstrate something else we got over here, which is really cool. So if you go down here, you're gonna find the hide bounding box. So H, if you click H and you do that, it's gonna hide the parts. So you can basically, let's see, sculpt over here and it won't affect this part. You can use the shift H button to show a bit of that part. And finally, you can use the alt H button to unhide everything else. Before moving on, I'd like to change the options on some of the brushes. First, we're gonna grab the grab brush, no pun intended, or use the G button to access it. And you're gonna notice by default, the strength is at one, which is a bit too strong. Not very practical when you're sculpting. For that, we're gonna dial it down to 0.1, which works pretty well for me. If you find the strength to be too weak, in this case, you can play around with the value and find what suits you best. Next, we're gonna play around with the scrape brush. So shift four, and the reason I'm giving you the hotkeys every time, I want you to remember them and try to rely on using the hotkeys instead of selecting the brushes this way. So anyways, for the scrape brush, we're gonna go down to the curve option over here and we're gonna select the flat option. If you wanna know what this is about, I already made a video explaining how the curves work and I don't really wanna get into it in this tutorial, but basically it changes the way the brush reacts with the surface. Now to the good stuff. One of the really cool things about sculpting in Blender is dynamic topology. This allows you to add or remove resolution from the mesh on the go, which is really cool. You can access that by control D button or just click on it. And once you do that, let me go to wireframe mode with the Z button to see what's going on. If you apply pressure, as you can see, it adds details. If you go further away and do the same thing, it removes. And that's because of the option in relative detail. Now some people go to constant detail, which basically tells Blender that no matter where you're at, in this scene, it adds exactly the same amount of details that is specified over here. So here or here, it'll do exactly the same thing. I personally advise against that and I think you should stick to relative detail, which allows you to control where you add resolution and where you don't. And that's quite important when you can't go as high as you want with the vertices in the program. So this actually does not work with all brushes. So for example, the grab brush and the smooth brush is not affected by the dynamic topology. So if we test it right over here, as you can see, nothing really happens. That's a good note to take. Okay, back to dynamic topology. Now as for this option, just keep it where it is. I already made a video explaining what each of these things do. But I'm not gonna go into details on it over here. You can click on the smooth shading. Let me just show you what it does which basically smooths things out in the viewport. Now, I personally think you should start by, you know, going without it because it allows you to see where you're adding details and where you're not. So if I go closer, let me see, let me push this down. It has a lot of details. So you can tell right away that everywhere around this part has less details than, you know, over here. If it was on smooth shading, you might not be able to see that. Okay, moving on. So the detail size, which I forgot to mention, when it's on relative detail, the lower you go over here, the more amount of details you'll be able to put. So the higher, the less amount of details you'll be able to put. That's another good note to have. The last thing I wanted to talk about in dynamic topology is symmetrize, and this is just magic. So I had the symmetry deactivated. Let me just activate it over here. So when you have the symmetry activated, for example, on X, and you sculpt on one side, it's gonna sculpt on the other side. But let's say for example, you had it deactivated for a specific reason and then you needed to activate it again, but you forgot to and you did a lot of changes. You can simply go to dynamic topology, just choose the right direction and hit symmetrize. Well, if I wanna do that to the other side, I think it's gonna be this one. Let's see, there you go. So that's a really cool option. 
Since you've gotten this far, I'm gonna do you a solid and show you a quick demonstration on how to use most of the brushes that I talked about with your sculpt in which situations. So I decided to go for an ear because I think I'll be able to use a lot of the brushes. Keep in mind, I'm gonna do a really quick one so it won't really look pretty, but I think it will be enough to demonstrate the brushes. So I'm gonna go to display, remove the only, well, activate only render, which will make the viewport cleaner. And then I'm going to go to edit mode with the tab button or over here, W and subdivide smooth a few times. Actually, there you go, perfect. And I will activate the dynamic topology with control D, put it down to eight, which is good enough, I think. So I'm gonna take the grab brush with the G button and maybe shape this to something uh, more, let's see, something that will help me sculpt the ears over it. Cause a sphere, well, I could do that, but yeah, let me just flatten it out a bit. There you go. Perfect. So I don't really have the symmetry activated right now because I don't really need it for the ear. And what I'm gonna do is I'm trying to mimic the area around the ear, well, behind the ear. So this is the back of the skull right here. And this is the side where I'm gonna add the ear. Okay, so when I want to add a big shapes, I usually go for the sculpt draw brush with the shift five. There you go. And then I just draw the shape that I want. So for the ear, it's going to be something like this with the ear lobe right over here. Perfect. I think this should work fine. I'm not going to be worried about all of these sides, which you should when you sculpt, but uh, for this demonstration, I I think it'll be faster if I don't. There you go, perfect. I'm just gonna do that. Cause usually you have a ear conca over here, but uh, I don't think I'm gonna do that over here. So I'm going to push this out. And just basic anatomy knowledge really. I'm trying to use a simple version of what I know so that I don't have to spend a lot of time. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to switch to the crease brush with number four. And then I'm going to just crease things out over here and inside as well. Just a bit, I'm not gonna add too much pressure because I want to switch back to the clay strips, which is a really good brush for subtle things like muscles and stuff like that. Maybe to get the shape of the side over here the ear or maybe the jaw because there's a lot of subtle things about the human body and the clay strips is just a magic brush for exactly that at least for me all right there you go so i'm trying to do this as fast as possible it'll be a bit difficult the ear is a bit complex but we'll see what we'll be able to do. So again, I'm, I'm back with the sculpt draw brush with the shift five, I believe, yep. To quickly remove a lot of the mesh over here. Perfect. And then I'm gonna go to the clay strip to just be subtle about the tragus, which is this part of the ear. Cause you know, I don't want it to go out way too much and using the sculpt brush over here would be just a mess. And now I'm gonna use a brush that I really love, which is shift four, the scrape brush. Don't forget the curve, we changed it earlier. And that really adds a nice, nice texture. It really refines whatever I go over with. And I do use the smooth brush with the shift button, even though you're not seeing it over here, it is happening. There you go, perfect. So it's starting to look like something as long as I don't turn or orbit too much. But yeah, looking nice. I'm gonna push this part out and this part actually kind of goes backwards. Let's smooth it out a bit and then go back to the crease brush with 
number four, if I'm not mistaken. Yep, number four. And just add what's necessary over here. So again, you're gonna notice I switch a lot between brushes. It's quite important to do so. And this is something you might not know if you just start sculpting, but it's also important to know how to, how to direct your brush in a certain way. And that really comes with experience. And the more you sculpt, the more you just start doing it, I guess. I'm gonna push this back. Boop. There you go. It's looking nice. It's looking okay for, I don't know how long I've been sculpting this, but I'm guessing just a few minutes, hopefully. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think demonstrating the brushes was actually a good idea. Even though I have a video coming up for you guys really soon on sculpting a stylized head in real time, you know, this could really get you started before you start the other video that's gonna come soon. So yeah. And uh, I guess this is a time to say, if you guys are enjoying what you're watching, do give me a like for the video. I would appreciate that. And uh, spread the word, share it, stuff like that. Well, I'm guessing if you're watching till here, then you like it. I don't know, maybe. There you go, that's, uh, that's looking really nice. I, I think like, a big part of me wants to continue this because I'm enjoying it. I really enjoy sculpting. And uh, a part of me is saying I should stop because I think I demonstrated most of the brushes. Actually, let me just make sure that, uh, let's see, let me just take a look. Mm, the pinch, I did not demonstrate the pinch brush. All right, so I, I guess we could use the pinch over here. Let's see, maybe over here, like it's getting closer in this part. But for the pinch brush, it's better if you add more detail. So by decreasing the number over here, so and getting closer, obviously, we could do that. Maybe add some smooth brush, and then again, more pinching. You know, you can get that look, that really clean look. You could do the same over here. All right, maybe over here as well. And as you can see, we're gonna have a plane change because of the way I moved the brush and the way I positioned everything. You know, I'm using the crease brush to push things upwards a bit. There you go. So uh, yeah, the pinch brush can be very, very useful. You could use it even in in parts like here. Maybe you want to make this part. Uh, whoops, I am using the crease brush. So P for pinch brush. And you can make this part sharper like that if you want to, or maybe even change the direction of it again you can do whatever you want when you sculpt which is really awesome and that's another reason i like to sculpt with blender it feels very sketchy like you're sketching on a paper and i really like the feel of it it's very natural for me so back to shift 4 the scrape brush and what i'm gonna do here is uh, what i like to do when i finish my sculpts usually is go down to four sometimes three or two and add a lot of subtle details like playing around with the direction of the brush using the scrape brush oh man for a second i thought i wasn't recording this part Woo! thankfully i am right keep in mind this is not a ear anatomy tutorial so don't don't try to memorize how I'm sculpting it. I'm not really paying attention to that right now. I'm just doing what I can with a short amount of time while talking at the same time, which is kind of difficult, but challenge, fun challenge, I guess. As you can see, like I could even get closer and add little little bumps over here and little, you know, little stuff. And there are a lot of ways to sculpt. Like this is one of the ways you can, you can try a lot of different ways and, and that's what's fun about it it's finding your own method your own whatever you like to do you know for example i always i usually start with a sphere but you don't really have to do that you can start in many different ways different shapes or with modifiers really up to you so yeah i'm gonna stop right here because uh, i i think i demonstrated the brushes enough for this point really nice cool an important feature I thought I'd mention is the Boolean tool. So let's say you want to merge two objects. 
So I'm going to duplicate this with Shift D, go back to the original one, and then I'm going to go to settings, add modifier and choose Boolean. So either you grab this over here and you choose the object. But when you have a lot of objects, it's a lot easier to just grab the picker and choose the object in the viewport. Okay. Now we're going to play around with the operation. So you got intersect union and difference to merge the objects. You're going to want to go to union. And if you hit the Z button to go to wireframe mode, anything that's highlighted will be the result. So let me show you. If you go back to intersect, you're going to get only this part. So only the parts that are intersected between both objects. If we choose difference, then this part is going to be removed and you only have this part left. So let's go to union, apply. And when you do that, just make sure to remove the other object that didn't have the modifier with it. So you can delete it if you want to. If I go to edit mode, you're going to notice that everything is merged. You can also go to the sculpt mode, maybe smooth this part out. And as you can see, it works perfectly. If you guys enjoyed the tutorial, then you will definitely enjoy the full course with the exclusive contents that I'm putting up on my Gumroad and giving to my Patreons. If you want to really support the channel, you can get it at the full price. However, I do understand that a lot of you are students and don't necessarily have the means to get it at full price. So I'm going to do you a solid and give you a 50% off promotional code in the comments section below. It will be up for a limited amount of time and a limited amount of sales. If you're interested, make sure you get it as soon as possible so that you don't miss out. In the full course, you're going to get a three part package. So for the first part, you're going to get an introduction to sculpting in Blender. In that package, you're going to get the blend files, the OBJ files. You're going to get the tutorials that I'm putting out here on YouTube. And in addition to that, you're going to get one hour of videos. So tutorials on sculpting tips, tricks and advice. And finally, the Blender theme that I'm currently using. The second part of the package is going to be about sculpting a stylized male face. So you're going to get the full recording of three hours of me sculpting the character, the blend files, the OBJ files, materials, textures, everything that comes with the character, the high res renders, and obviously the tutorial that I'm also sharing on YouTube, which is one hour and 30 minutes of real time sculpting with commentary. The final one is a bonus package, which is part three, texturing and rendering the skin in Blender. Yes, you heard it right. I'm going to show you how to texture and render the skin in Blender, a full tutorial of 30 minutes. I'm going to take you through the material that I created for the skin, the subsurface scattering, and I'll also show you in real time how to texture the diffuse for the skin and how to texture the bump map for the skin. The best part is all of that will be hand painted. So I'm going to show you tips and tricks on how to do that. Hopefully you guys learned a lot from this video. Let me know what you thought about it, what you liked about the content, the tutorial, the way I did it, what you didn't like, what you want me to improve, maybe for the next course. I'm really excited to read your comments. Also, I'd love a like on the video if you enjoyed it. It really helps out the channel and helps me pump out more video for you guys. Also, spread the word, share this video with your friends, share it on your social media. Let's make this community so big, full of passionate artists, just like yourself and I, sculptures, character arts, everything. I'll see you guys in the next one. Mm -hmm.